Are we gonna keep dicking around or are we gonna actually port something? Good morning and happy Friday. Captain 315 here. TikTok, Scotty Andrew 315. You know what? You can't even say good morning on TikTok anymore without being censored and getting your stuff shut down. So just forget about TikTok. I'm getting away from it. It's ridiculous. Anyhow, we're not gonna get into that. We're gonna get into porting. The chips are flying today for stage two. Uh, I don't even know what episode this is or what installment this is, um, but I want to go over on the board, more drawings, more school, ring the bell. I'm gonna show you here because it's about impossible to actually show you uh, on the porting. I'll throw a little, uh, a little bonus grinding in there just because it's fun to see stuff fly. Uh, so this is what we're doing. Remember, this is for basically all flathead engines, but the one that we're actually working on here is a Briggs Opposed Twin flathead. So this is what we're gonna be doing. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and draw an intake port. Okay. Let's put a cylinder in there. Is this big enough y'all can see? Oh yeah, that's good. All right. So there's our piston, we got that. Here's our cylinder in our combustion chamber. This is our cylinder head, okay? Kinda. What we're going to do is in the previous installment, Let the Chips Fly, we took this sharp edge. This is, there's, there's what it looks like from OEM. It's just freaking terrible, okay? You got a big boss right here that your valve guide is in the middle of, okay? We already took this out, right? We made that nice and smooth, short turn. Try to smooth out that short turn. Okay, what we're gonna do on this installment, we're gonna narrow up this area. We're gonna kind of knife that area, and that's about impossible to show on here. Um, if you viewed it from the top, this is the hole that your valve actually goes up and down in, okay? There's all this material and crap around it. What we're gonna do is basically just make this a somewhat of a shape like that and narrow it up here to the sides uh that will be able to be actually be able to uh i can't speak again we'll be able to show that on, uh before and after on the block i will show you that uh as far as the port itself this is what it's hard to explain i'm going to take this part of the drawing and blow it up big with my magic marker okay There's our port. Oh, look, nice short turn. Y'all did a great job on that. You got rid of that sharp edge. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we talked about the valve guide. We've already done this, we've done the stage one. Where this port opening is, okay, your valve sits right here. Does that make more sense now? That's your valve. This is your 30 degree or some engines 45 degree seat. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna actually hog the bowl, as I would call it. Uh, some people call this the bowl area or the throat area. It's the area directly below the valve. We're gonna take this and we're gonna kind of make a bowl shape out of this, okay? If you view the port from the side, skip that. Don't mess with that short turn. You don't have a lot of material there, I'm sorry. We're gonna bowl this. So if you looked at the valve, let's draw it from the top. Okay, there's your valve. And there's your port. You're looking at it from the top. Your, your piston's over here, okay? We're gonna take this and we're basically gonna do this with it. That is a little bit extreme. Um, we're talking enough that you can feel, if you were to stick your hand down this edge here, you can feel it kind of roll out a little bit if you're following me it's kind of hard to explain i'm not doing a real good job this morning bear with me deal with it i will take a measurement and actually give you a measurement for this this is something you want to experiment with uh, for all intents and purposes anything with the overhead valve in the automotive world you didn't want to do that there's actually a calculation you do when you basically come in after your valve job and you drop it straight in. This was kind of an experiment and it really helped. Um, 
the thought process was to actually, if you're familiar with Venturi principle, you've got air going this way, coming out of a size like that, you put a restriction in, the air is going to go faster in this area. That's how a carburetor works, by the way. So my thought was if maybe we actually made the valve seat area that we can't really change the size of without going crazy, that maybe if we made that a little bit of a restriction, the air would speed up as it went past that seat and got around the valve a little bit quicker. Uh, flow bench, repeated testing proof it works. Um, if you all are familiar with uh, Studebaker, you off-road mud mowers guys, you know who Studebaker is. Um, it was funny, I mentioned this to him, and he says, yeah, I do that all the time. Studebaker is a mad scientist, I'm telling you, that guy's smart, you need to listen to him. He's got it going on. So, this is where we're going with this. I will show you narrowing up the guide. One other point I want to make while I'm scribbling down here. We're going to talk about intake and exhaust, uh, port matching, gasket matching, everybody talks about that. Basically, let's just say this is your intake port, okay? There's your intake manifold, carburetor, whatever it may be. Obviously, that, that would be pretty bad, right? They're misaligned. People are talking about gasket matching or port matching. They're basically going to do this, okay? That's great, but I'm going to save you a lot of time, effort, calculations, screwing around, and mistakes. No matter what you do, take a measurement of the opening of your intake manifold. Make sure that your port opening going into the actual block itself is larger than the intake. So no matter what you do, you have this situation. This is your port. This is your intake. That little bit of a step right there, obviously you want it kind of minimal, but if you have a little bit of a step there, um, it's not going to cause enough of an issue or a disruption. Certainly not going to cause as much of a disruption as this would, a big manifold going into a small port. Same thing on the exhaust side. You're just going the opposite way. You want your port smaller than your exhaust uh, by a slight amount. There's actually a benefit to that. We're not gonna get into it where you have a little bit of a step on the intake or exhaust and it can help prevent reversion if you're running a pretty good size cam. Let's not worry about that. We're not we're we're not building rocket ships here. We're uh, trying to get some more power out of our uh, little flathead engines. All right, let's get the porting. Okay, I'm going to be moving the phone around and shuffling it and shaking a little bit. Just bear with me. This is our port. Remember, we already did just the basic port cleanup on it, like the average guy is going to do. Went in there and cleaned up that short turn. Kind of took that edge off a little bit, got rid of the sharp edges. Here's a good view, and pardon my shaking with the camera. Here's a good view of your valve guide, boss, right here. See how that's thick? This area is kind of thin. We're going to take a round cutter, and we're basically going to plunge it right in here. That will widen up this area, and it will narrow this area. So looking from the top now... We're going to come right in here with a round cutter that will get material out of here and we will blend that up to the seat in that bowl shape that I showed you. We're going to take that edge out right there. We're going to bring this back in here with a round cutter and this will end up narrowed out right here. That will increase the flow on the floor by a ton. Again, remember with that 90 degree intake manifold on there, the fuel didn't even go down here, but the air does. We're also going to take this little step out right here as well. Now, folks, depending on what engine you have, be damn careful doing this. You can't just go in there and hog because there is your actual port. That's the wall of your port. So either take a measuring device or even I'll just take my fingers and squeeze and pinch like this and go, whoo, I better not take any material out right here even though... I think that's where it needs to come out. Guys, we're working with basically industrial 
3,500 RPM lawnmower engines here. There's certain things we're just not gonna be able to do. Uh, don't break through the wall of that port and don't leave it paper thin. Um, it's up to you. I, I like to, I would rather leave it a little bit thick and sacrifice a half a horsepower than to try to make that paper thin and then the heating and cooling cycles cracks it and now you can throw the block in a garbage can. All right, let's get to porting. Okay, so we went ahead and narrowed up that valve guide, boss. Now remember, this is just roughed in. You can see that's nice and smooth through here now, through here. Here's the spot I'm talking about. I can't get the cutter all the way down in there because it's really starting to take a lot of material out right here. And we don't want to break through the guide side and we don't want to break through the port, right? Little spot like that, we have no choice. Leave it alone. Same thing back here. This area is directly behind the valve stem, which is also a restriction. We'll get into that later. Don't worry too much about this back here. Just bring that around and smooth it out and up. It's, it's, that's fine. You don't have to get nuts right in this direct area. Another thing I want to show you. If you look at this port, it's kind of hard to see without a good bright light. But if you see nice and round here and then see how this area kind of goes in this general direction get rid of that lay this back make that nice and smooth so when you look in that port this is a nice round shape so we can lay this corner back you can see this don't need to need to be laid back as much on the other side it's pretty much a straight shot there's a little tiny bump right there that is so there's extra material for your head bolt all right, you can smooth that off a little bit if you want. That's not enough of a restriction to worry about. Let's see if I can get a better picture. There's the bump right there. Just smooth that out a little bit. If you happen to break through there where there's a head bolt, it's not the best idea, not the best scenario, but don't throw it away. Just put the head bolt in it and you'll be fine. All right, there's a better view. You can see how this is, this area right here is kind of in this way this actually goes around the corner right here we're going to try to lay that back we can't take it all the way back remember we don't have enough material but we can take the majority of it back Okay, so if you look in here, I don't know if you can see it on video, but you can see kind of where this goes in like this and around on both sides, okay? Kind of bowled out. Back here, again, lack of material. I can't go nuts with it, but I was able to at least scoop it a little bit through here and smooth everything out. Now, any black areas... I left those, I wanted you to see before I do the final cleanup in here, where I did not touch any material. The black is the original port. There's those areas we just can't do anything about, okay? Also showing you this. See that? I never touched the port opening itself. Didn't touch much of the roof at all. Only went in there to smooth things out. That's what you're looking for. You don't need to necessarily hog this thing all the way out because only so much air is gonna go through that size of that seat and through that combustion chamber and that cylinder head. Now, let's talk about, 
got two blocks here. I've got the experimental block and this is my good block. We talk about a D-shaped port versus a round port. You can see the difference. See this intake port? Those work very well. That's pretty much a standard issue thing. If you look, if I put the bottom of this port right against that valve seat, see how much you can see out through there? You can see about half of that seat. Look at the difference. See the round port? Look, you can see almost as much. But you can see these corners right here aren't laid back. Um, surprisingly, this D port is a pretty common way to do it. Um, I noticed no loss in airflow by having a round port. Now, I suppose at higher RPMs, if I had a bigger uh, shop vac, I don't know. It, it's hard to say. But this is retaining more of the short turn that is so important instead of laying this all the way back in here like what happens with the D port. Um, I'm going to run it. That would be something up to you if you're getting into experimenting. Again, a little YouTube manometer is, is absolutely priceless if you want to play. Just go in here and start farting around. I can't encourage you and suggest that enough. Go in there and play and see what happens, preferably with an old block. Um, but you can see that this area where you can see out is round. There's your D port. I'm gonna give the round port a shot. And there you have it. Final product. Guides narrowed up nice. Got a nice round short turn. The fuel and air no longer have to go around a corner here. It's a nice straight shot in. Everything nice and smooth. Can almost see the air going through it. And here, just for the heck of it, there's your stock intake port. Yucky. We certainly got into the nitty gritty today, didn't we? I uh, hope you all learned something. Uh, I can't wait to uh, see and hear some results of you guys trying this on your own. Get one of those manometers, otherwise it's a guess. Uh, do some playing, do some experimenting. Um, this one's all taken care of. Uh, remember, don't go crazy with these things. There's only so much you can do, and if you blow a hole through the side of the port, uh, you can pretty much throw your block in a garbage can. Uh, don't make them paper thin either. Uh, remember the 75-25 rule. 75% of your gains are going to come from 25% of the work. If you want to go after that last half a horsepower, knock yourselves out, but you're going to be here for a long time and you absolutely are not going to do that without a manometer or better yet, a professional flow bench. Uh, remember, this is like some backwoods tuning here and it works. Uh, stay tuned for the next installment. Um, we're gonna touch a little bit on porting the exhaust, but uh, I'm finding, like we talked about earlier, it, it's almost a case of uh, the level that we're at is to just go in there and open that port up and uh, get all your rough edges out of it and try to straighten the airflow path as much as possible. Uh, I'm not seeing massive gains because there's only so much air that's going to get through that seat. Uh, the seat or the cylinder head itself seems to be more of a restriction. We're still going to play with that. Um, we will talk in depth about valve jobs. Uh, major gains to be had there at low lift. Uh, that's where your torque's coming in. Remember, get that valve open and get that air coming in there immediately. Pack as much as you can get in that cylinder and then slam that damn thing shut. That's where your power's coming from. Stay tuned, folks. Hope you enjoy.